Testing and documenting APIs in Visual Studio is even easier thanks to the latest update. Now we can use HTTP files to execute an API call and see the results right in our editor. Let's see how they work in this 10 minute training video. Now for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need a quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So let's dive right into the code. So what I have here is a quick minimal API that's just a little demo to show off what we can do in API. So we have uh, a people list here, again, three people right in line, there's no data access or anything. And then down below, I've gotten rid of the Microsoft's default or sample code, and I've added four endpoints. So I have the get, post, put, and delete endpoints. And these are just to show um, what can be done, okay? What, what uh, how to execute different calls using this HTTP file. So if we were to run this, and let's do that so we can see what it looks like. Wait for it to execute. And we have our get, post, put, and delete. And of course we could load this up and try it out with Swagger and, and see it execute and go create, you know, that works and, and do that with all the rest of these. And it shows you how to build out the various things we need to in Swagger. But we wanna go beyond that and learn how to use this new HTTP file because this works not just with your own APIs, but with any API, including an API that's external to you or your company. So let's just say we're using an API and you wanna document how it works or even test how it works. Well, let's do that now. So I'm gonna create a folder, I'm gonna call it docs just because um, I like to you know, organize these things. I would probably put it in some type of folder. I'm not sure yet in the naming convention, but something like docs or something like that. And then in here, I would add a new file and I do one per endpoint type. So I'd call this the, uh, the people.http, uh, okay? And we hit okay. And here's a template for that, people.http. And it says, hey, if you want more information, go and visit this URL. So we're gonna get rid of that. And what we're gonna do is build out a few calls. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the properties and launch settings. And down here we see that this is our base URL. So I'm gonna copy that base URL. We're gonna need that um, for all of our calls. So let's actually make a variable here. We'll call it root URL. And just paste it in, no quotes. And what that does is it gives us a variable we can use to then say get and double curly braces root URL slash people. And now what we have is we have a call set up to actually test our API. Now there's a little green arrow to the left of it. This would execute it. In fact, I can click this and it's gonna execute. The problem is, is that right now, you know, we have a, a 504 gateway timeout because it tried, it couldn't find anything because we don't have the API running. We're testing our own API, the API we're already inside. So you have to have this API running in order to run this test. But if we were testing out uh, the, the swappy.dev API, which is the Star Wars API, you wouldn't need to have anything running because it would work just fine uh, with nothing running. But let's Let's run this API, we'll just push it off to the side. We don't actually need to see it. Um, it's running now, and if I were to run this again, notice now we get a 200 message, and we get our content that says, it's an array of, of objects, Tim, Corey, Sue Storm, and John Smith, IDs one, two, and three. So there's our, there's our call to our API. We have other types here as well, so let's see how we get around calling these other types, like a post or a put. So to separate out your calls, put three hashtags in a row. This means this is a new call to an API. And we're gonna say, this will be a post. And we'll do our root URL slash people again. But this time we're gonna say the content type is going to be application slash JSON. You can put a lot of, you know, all the, the header stuff and that kind of stuff in here. And I'm gonna put in the body just by putting clear braces here. Let's say ID is four. Now, since it's JSON, first 
name is Jane. And then last name, oops, is uh, Jones. How about that? So what I've done here, let's put our, I like to always close out my call afterwards. Um, what we've done here is that we're gonna make a post command, a post call, which we're gonna pass in a, a body that has a an object. In fact, we come back over here and look um, at our post command. We are passing in a person model object and we're adding that to the people list. And if you look at person model, notice that it's capital I for ID, capital F in first name, capital L in last name. And yet that's not what I'm doing over here because C Sharp does translate these things from JSON and the, the normal JSON convention over to be the C Sharp convention. So this would be typical in how you call this. So let's run this again. Let's say just run post. And it says we've got a 200 message. If we run the get again, we can now see that we have a fourth entry, one for Jane Jones. But let's keep going. Let's look at what a put command would be. And so we have our root URL slash people slash, and let's update number four just uh, because and we'll say content type is application slash JSON. And for this put command, what I did was we looked back over here. I pass in an ID on the URL, but then I also pass in in the body, the person model. And I say, hey, let's find that, that one. And if it's not null, if you found it, then update the first name and last name based upon the model you passed in. So with that, let's pass in, let's take the same object. And we're gonna say Jane Smith instead. So we'll, say, we'll change it from uh, Jane Jones to Jane Smith. Let's run this put command. That ran, it returns back the object that we just built and then we're updated. We come back over here and notice that Jane Smith is now ID four instead of Jane Jones. And last but not least, let's look at how we delete something. So let's close out that command and say delete root URL slash people slash four. And again, let's just close that command out and we're gonna execute this and we get the 200 content is true, which if we go back up here to our get command, we can see we only have three entries now, not four. So that's how you use the HTTP file to test out your API or test another API. Also document your API because, let's save this, um, when you come in here and say, hey, how does this API work? Well, you can come over here to the people.http and see all the different commands and an example of how to call those commands. So there's a lot of different ways you can use these HTTP files for documentation, for testing, um, for figuring out how an API works or playing around with things. Um, we can use variables like this, and of course they pass through all the different calls. And we can separate out by file for the different endpoint groups. Uh, that way you can have one for people and one for employees and one for you know whatever the, uh, the different paths are for your API. So lots of cool stuff with this. There's a lot more to play with, there's a lot more depth, and this is a newer feature to Visual Studio. So there are still some things they're working on adding in for the more complex uh, use cases. But I would encourage you to try this out and let me know what you think. Let me know if you're gonna add this to your, um, your API, not really as a unit test, but as a way to test out and try out various endpoints and also to document your endpoints. Thanks for watching, and as always, I am Tim Corey.